What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. And I'm I'm late. You know, it's funny. I'm never late with news. I'm always one of the first channels to drop. I could not get to the Goran Dragic uh, news yesterday. So we're going to talk about it on today's episode. Break down what this means for the Chicago Bulls, both in their bench and their uh, their cap situation going forward. We'll get into all that and more on today's Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, thank you for joining. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me today on Chicago Bulls Central. I'm your host, Hayes, here, and we're going to break down this Goran Dragic signing. So as most of you guys know by now, which is, this is still just weird. I'm using one of the first channels to drop anytime Bulls news drop, but it, yeah, listen, every dog has their day. Uh, but with that being said, Goran Dragic signs a one-year, $2.9 million deal with the Chicago Bulls, and now this left many questions on what does this mean? We knew Billy Donovan, one thing that I have been saying, that the Bulls were going to add veterans to this bench. Now, they did that with Andre Drummond. They now do that again with Goran Dragic. Even if you wanted to look at Derrick Jones Jr., he's been in this league a little bit. I really wouldn't call him a veteran because he hasn't really accomplished much. But with that being said, um, this team, in many ways, this is a good signing as far as like the offensive-wise. The fact that he can get a bucket is a little bit... Um, the fact that he's a point guard, the fact that theoretically point guards should be one of the positions that we do have locked up with Io DeSumo, Alex Caruso, and Lonzo Ball with three players that can play point guard very heavily. Now, Io is looked at as kind of a combo guard, so I kind of understand a little bit there, but it has raised some questions on what does this mean for Kobe White? What does this mean for Lonzo Ball and his injury? And that's the kind of things that we're going to talk about. We're going to get into that, but first I want to talk about what Goran Dragic brings to this team. He does bring a, a veteran uh a uh, bench depth to this team. He now makes helps the Bulls be one of the deepest benches in the league. Now, still very guard heavy, but one of the deepest benches in the league. Um, his shooting uh percentages: fifty five percent from those left corner threes, fifty percent from right corner threes, thirty four percent from above the break threes, forty percent on catch and shoot threes, and thirty eight point two percent on wide open threes. So again. The shooting that we needed, Goran Dragic brings a lot of, and we know Billy Donovan is not hesitant at all to play players maybe out of their more natural or positions that they've played the majority of their career. But Goran coming in, being able to provide some excellent three-point shooting, he also has some solid court vision over the course of his career. Not the best defensive player or anything like that. He is a player that does get effort on defense, though. How does he fit on this team? You know, it really remains to be seen. It, the, the Bulls' offense is going to be a very interesting one to see how Billy Donovan really tries to unlock everybody to their full potential being here on the Chicago Bulls roster. But Goran Dragic is just, in of itself, in a vacuum, a very solid player and a very solid addition to the Chicago Bulls. But now, what does this mean for Kobe White, for Alonzo Ball? Um, I won't lie to you. At least my initial thought went to this is that a, what Alonzo may not be ready, right? One of the last updates that we heard, um, uh, for Mark Eversley, is that, hey, that they hope that that uh, Lonzo Ball was going to be ready at the start of the season. He is, you know, rehabbing, still continuing his rehab, things like that. But it does raise some questions on, all right, is this depth piece, is this depth signing um, something? It, in, because they're, they're now thinking, hey, there's a chance that Lonzo may not be ready to go this season. And Io may be our starting sh uh, point guard to start the season. We don't know, right? We'll We'll continue to monitor that as things get close. But, hey, I wouldn't be lying if I didn't say that. It didn't make my mind go to question. Now, some Bulls fans have have thought, what does this mean for Kobe White? Is this now a sign that Kobe White will indeed be moved? I don't think so. And one of the reasons why I say this is that we did get news as well yesterday that the Bulls have rejected any significant interest from Kobe White so far. And this is according to Darnell Mayberry from The Athletic, um, saying that, you know, as of right now, Chicago's stance on Kobe White is uh, is notable because he's eligible to become a restricted free agent at the end of the season. And it seems like the team is interested, if need be, to let that restricted free agency uh, pass by or play out and possibly even match any deals for Kobe White as well. So it's it's it, this whole thing. It just it raises so many questions on like what's going on with the guards, with the Bulls guard rotation. If Kobe's being moved, if Lonzo's not going to be back healthy, is it a combination of the two? We don't know. But as it stands, like I said, in a vacuum, this does mean this is a good overall situation for the Chicago Bulls as far as just adding Goran Dragic and the talent that he have. Now, can he stay healthy? It's going to be a big question as well, and I understand that question, and that's going to remain to be, to be answered. But like I said, overall, 
I think we're pretty solid no matter what at the point guard position. And they, they spent $2.9 million. Now, that is his veteran minimum. So that does not come out the mid-level exception for anyone who's who's questioning there. It means that the Bulls still have $7 million left of that mid-level exception, the non-taxpaying mid-level exception, which would hard cap the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls are now $1.5 million under the luxury tax, meaning that almost any other veteran signing or anything will put the Bulls at the luxury tax. So about $1.5 million under that luxury tax option. It's, this is just an interesting, uh, just offseason for the Chicago Bulls, right? Yes, not the best. A lot of Bulls fans disappointed. Don't think that the Bulls done enough. We'll see how it all works out. But just a really interesting one because, yes, they are trying to avoid, it seems like, both hard capping themselves and the luxury tax for now. And we'll see how that ends up playing out. Like I said before, I'm not as big. You know, a lot of, a lot of Bulls fans uh, calling the Bulls cheap, and I understand that, and it's not necessarily wrong. But a lot of Bulls fans sit right now, at this, the way that they're discussing this Bulls offseason is just the the cheapness of it, right? And it's not just that. The Bulls are, have done two things that I don't think are necessarily mutually exclusive, right? So the seven, the not uh, not using the full non tack player players mid level exception simply just because it hard caps them and it will limit them at deals. Not going into the luxury tax as of right now may just be because they're going into the luxury tax. The best believe the Bulls are going to be a luxury tax paying team next season unless they do some really creative things with the cap or this team takes a drastic hit in quality. Right. So it's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see. But like just seeing for what it is. I, it, the, the Bulls avoiding those two for now. Right. For now is going to be interesting because how much can they avoid it going into the, re, the, the full season? But now uh, everything points to unless a trade is made, which everything that we've been hearing, we've been reading. Um, it doesn't seem like a trade is on the horizon as of right now. That that could change any moment because, as we know with the NBA, uh, you can think that a player is going to stick around, and then uh, then they'll be requesting a trade the next day. Um, so we'll see how long. But as it stands right now, the Bulls are now officially done with offseason. We don't have any more roster spots open. Our two way players, uh, the two two way contracts that we have, as long as nobody uh tries to sign Malcolm Hill to an offer sheet and the Bulls don't match, those are both taken up as well. This is the roster that we're rolling with, guys. This is it. I know a lot of you guys have have questioned the depth of power forward. It's really going to be Patrick Williams and Derrick Jones Jr. They'll probably still play some Javante there as well, just as needed. Um, but that's really, I mean, we'll see what happens with Justin. Justin Lewis is also an option, but now that he is on a two-way contract and all the main roster spots are taken, unless injury or something happens and he's called up, I don't, or they make a cut, right? There's still that that the Tony Bradley of it all. <laughs> to call it to, to name it something is going to be interesting to see what the Bulls try to do with Tony Bradley because again another young player that by all if you just look at like the advanced analytics and you guys know I'm a big advanced analytics guy is that there's there's enough there that maybe a team could be interested in the promise or potential of Tony Bradley I'm not I don't care I don't think that the guy's an NBA player but with that being said like can the Bulls move Tony Bradley for a second round a low second round pick or maybe a, a highly protected Second round pick that may never convey into somebody, some other team's cap space to free up a, a roster spot. Or if they do need a roster spot, would they be willing to cut Tony Bradley and just pay that that two point two million dollars? I think is what it is. Two point one, I think is what it is. Um, it, it's just a lot of questions. But the Bulls do maintain a lot of flexibility in this. I know it doesn't seem like they do outside of the luxury tax flexibility, which we've already talked about. Um, they that they do have still having a lot of their mid level exception as well, if need be. Um, there are, as far as the roster situation, there are some flexibility. Derrick Jones Jr. didn't sign for very much, $3.3 million. Um, that can be easily moved if needed, theoretically. Uh, we already talked about Tony Bradley needing to be moved, theoretically, if needed. Um, so they maintain that even Goran Dragic signing at the veteran minimum, if they need to open up a roster spot and he's not working and Lonzo's fully healthy and they end up not needing Goran as much as they think they do, then yeah. Yeah, they, they have some ability to open up spots or include some players in trades because they do have a lot of deals that are lower that are easily included in a trade package just to help match salary. So we'll see. The Bulls, just this offseason is, I don't think we're going to fully be able to see the full picture of what this offseason really means for the Chicago Bulls, maybe until the trade deadline to see what they do. So we'll see. Let me know what you guys think down below on the Goran Dragic signing. What do you think that that means? Does it make you concerned for Alonzo Ball as it does me, right? I don't mean to fear monger anybody, but I'm definitely worried now about Lonzo Ball considering we don't have any 
confirm firm updates on his injury situation. But let me know everything you think down below. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning to Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Pod at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to leave a text and a voicemail, the number to do so is 773-270-2799. We are number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And like I like to end every episode on Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.